All right. So, um, hello, everyone. Um, we are going to do something that is very, uh, I think it's overdue for some uh, people to just do like a basic introduction into CLI and terminal work so that you can uh, feel a little bit more like hackers after all. And um, uh, so I just want to quickly just remind people uh, about the structure because we have some new people also joining. So the, the, the format we are currently in is the, um, is the Monarch Ontology training. If you click, if you go to Obook and you click on the Monarch Ontology training side, you will see uh, the, the lessons, the past lessons. Most of them will have actually recordings attached to them. And you can see the tutorial that we are uh, doing today. So um, today will be like, I'm just gonna take a quick look at the participants because some of you will like, for example, I already know people like Joe and Ray won't uh, gain very much, but it's cool that you are here. Maybe you can help uh, answer some of the questions from the uh, other participants, um, but we are going to do go like really back to the absolute basics. And, um, and uh, so the way that I, I'm envisioning this is we, we do a tutorial today. So I tried to cram everything into today, but then I decided that's crazy. Let's split it into, uh, we have a tutorial today where we will do some of the very basic commands, uh, a bit of command line thinking, how do we chain commands together and stuff like that. And then in the next uh, tutorial, which is either in two or four weeks, we'll see, uh, depending on whether there are other things that need to be done in the meantime, we will do some more uh, interesting advanced things. So the stuff that I'm actually more, uh, more excited about, like for example, managing your, um, your bash or uh, ZSH. I don't even know how it's pronounced in, in America. So I would call it always ZSH. Um, uh, or is it Zish or something? I don't know. Uh, profiles and managing them and adding stuff like uh, shortcut commands and various other awesome things. So today is really super basic first introduction for people that may have kind of like seen and maybe have ex executed some commands, but not really knowing, you know, how this works and uh, what they're doing. Okay. Um, the tutorial is uh, complete, so you can uh, you can uh, do it also in your own time. If some parts are too slow, uh, sorry, too fast now for you, it's everything that we are going to do today is documented um, up until the very end. Um, so I'm going to um, just get started. And as always, um, please interrupt me immediately uh, when you have a question like there's no need to raise your hands or there's no need to feel bad or anything just unmute nico 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 can i and blah 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 and then you ask your question uh, i would also encourage you all now um, that are participating except for maybe the ones that are already knowing all the things that i'm talking about to actually open their terminals so in the case of some of you, so I see like at least two, three, uh, two or three Windows users here. So the, there is one way you can follow this tutorial even uh, as a Windows user. Um, it's explained here in the, big, in the top part, but I just don't want you to get like uh, too lost immediately in the very beginning, uh, which is you enter the ODK using the bash command. So most of you here have some kind of ontology. It doesn't matter which one on their machine. So what I recommend to you is, um, so I'm showing this example now for, for the OBA ontology, but the same will work for um, every uh, ontology with the critical path ontology, any ontology, it doesn't really matter. So, um, so if you don't, you don't need to do that, if you have a Unix system, so you don't do that. If you have a Mac, you don't do that. If you have Linux, you just do this, follow this step when you have Windows. So you go to your source ontology directory. And in your source ontology directory, the only thing you do is you type run.bat and then bash. That's it. You hit enter. I can't do that here now. I show you how this would look like here, so that how it should look like. Um, so it will, what it will do is it will 
enter the ODK and give you the, com, com, the give you the terminal and all the commands that we are going to work with inside of the ODK so you can follow along. Okay, I'll give you two seconds to uh, to do that. I'm going to get out of there again. For the rest of you, please just uh, open your terminal. So if you don't know what to do, uh, open your terminal. You can hit command, and if you're on a Mac, you can, for example, hit command uh, space to search, then you type terminal, and then you see this uh, program called terminal.app. Uh, you click on that, and then you see something like this nice uh, black screen here. And I will randomly pick people here to uh, tell me whether they are following along um, well. So let's start um, here with Bradley. So far, you, do you, do you, uh, everything, uh, do you have your terminal open? I'm just randomly picking, not, not because I think that you are less or no more, <laughs> more or less. I just pick you now randomly, so. No, that's fine, yes. Awesome. I have my terminal Great. open and I'm familiar with most of the things in this tutorial. Yeah, that's, uh, I knew, <laughs> I knew this. Some of the others uh, are not so far, but it's very hard. Like we are a very diverse group and hopefully the next tutorial will give you more advanced stuff to uh, work with. All right, so let's, uh, uh, I'm going to go to the start again. So, so this is, so what you should be seeing is something like this here. So you see when, when you've opened your terminal, you see um, most of you anyways, if you haven't added, if you haven't like changed the way that your profile is displayed, you see, uh, and you see some very big black screen, you see um, some kind of like name here, which we are not going um, much into detail about. Then you see this nice tilde, and this dollar sign. And what and we are going to take a look at what all of these things mean uh, now in, uh, in, a, in the following uh, command executions. So generally, you know, for now, we are not going to need to distinguish very much the terminology here. So whether this is the terminal or the command prompt or the command line or all of these things mean slightly different things. But for our facts and purposes here, we just pretend this is all the same thing. It's this black box here where we write some commands inside. Um, uh, and um, so the first command uh, what we, uh, that we want to execute is, uh, because we frequently forget who we are, is this nice command, who am I? Um, so if you execute this, uh, you will see uh, you, it will give you some kind of printout. So in my case, it will give, you, give me my username. Uh, do you uh, can uh, let me pick someone else? Um, Alan, are you following along this uh, tutorial? Yeah, I'm just trying to get into the same tutorial, but yeah, I, I followed this. I had my terminal open. I did the who am I got all and, sorts. Uh, who, who are you? <laughs> uh, apparently, I'm staff. Uh, uh, okay. How much do you want to know? There's a bunch of junk uh, here. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it, says, it tells you more. I don't want to know anymore, but okay, you have staff. <laughs> Great. Anyways, so this is uh, this command. It doesn't really matter what this command does. This command print just gives you a sense of, um, uh, of um, who you are. And so the next thing that I want to figure out is where you are. And here, um, this is a very, very important command that you will use no matter how experienced you are throughout uh, your entire terminal career all the time, which is PWD. So PWD, basically, if you execute this command, so you tell, so just so that you also get into this kind of logic, um, we are entering commands this, that are being processed by the shell. And that and it's doing some smart things in the background, and then usually some kind of output is printed. And here, this uh, command, we are requesting to know what is the path that we are currently located at inside of our terminal. Okay, so here you can see um, by default when you are adding uh, entering the terminal for the first time, you will be located at the at your um, home directory. 
and um, and this and this is one thing that is uh, that you should all kind of like absorb immediately this is also reflected by this little tilde symbol that you see or most of you or many of you in any case will see when they are um, looking at their um, uh, when, when they are looking at the default output of their um, terminal. So you can see here after your name, which is this thing. So this is actually just for the interested. This is the, actually my computer name here. This is my username. And then you see here colon, and then you see this, this uh, tilde symbol. This tilde symbol means the home directory or user directory. So if I go, let's say, somewhere crazy, like I'm going, going into my workspace directory somewhere else, yeah, so I can now go and go, and we will look at this command later on. I can go to the, the tilde directory, and I will end up back in the in my um, uh, home directory. So tilde home directory. Um, all right. Uh, did um, so I guess like, this is something that most of you will have uh, done have perfectly and figured out. So that's all right then. So very important command, no matter how experienced, you will always use it. All right, so we have done now um, where we are and who we are. Uh, so now let's look a little bit around. So what I wanna look at first is using the ls command. So ls is something you will also forever use. It um, has lots of, you know, let's just start with a very simple default version. So if you're typing ls, what it does is it gives you a list of all of the, of all of the files and all of the directories inside of the directory where you're currently at. Uh, so remember, with pwd, you've determined you are in your home directory. I could also you know, show you this home directory in your finder, which many of you will be familiar with. So you see this, would see this in a finder. And if you type ls, you will see a list of all of the directories in that, uh, all of the files in that uh, home directory. Um, and by default, like once you get a little bit more experience with ls, uh, you will not actually just use this default uh, output of ls, which is a, a little, which doesn't give you a lot of information. So you will use the ls minus l command, which gives you not only um, uh, the, uh, the doesn't only output your directories as a nice like neat list, but it also gives you a bunch of interesting pieces of information. Some of which we don't really discuss today. Like for example, you get some stuff about um, the, the um, read and write and writes that, uh, that are on this file. You get some information about who created it, when was it last modified, and uh, stuff like that. Uh, so in the end, the last column here is the, um, the, um, uh, the name of the directory. Uh, so you can see some of them are files like this here. And so all very chaotic on my, um, uh, on my home directory, um, and uh, some of them are uh, folders. Okay, so now um, Nico, let me see. Yep, go ahead. Quick question. So some of our command lines are showing like the tilde and then a percent sign instead of a dollar sign. Does that mean something different or is it just the same? Does anyone know, uh, anyone else know the answer, whether this is something that's, uh, that is in Zish and uh, maybe in the different command line, why people, uh, I mean, this is definitely, it will be a delimiter for the command line, but does anyone know, know the history behind the percent sign versus the dollar sign? No one does. I also don't. So <laughs> I would, I, I also assume, I would assume that, uh, let me see my, uh, in my other command line, whether I see, I here see something entirely different because I'm using uh, oh my ZSH, but uh, okay, I just ask now, Chris, one moment, how do you pronounce ZSH in America? Zish or ZSH or ZSH or what? Um, I've been here long enough. I say, I, I don't know what I say. Oh my Zish. Well, I always use it in the context of oh my Z shell. So. Mm. But for just the shell, I guess I would say Z shell. Okay, Z shell. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Okay. 
so um let me just see whether where i am in the tutorial now okay next is uh, cd all right so now so far what we've done is we've taken a little bit of look around uh, and now what we are doing is we are doing our first uh, creating our first um uh directory so what so the next command that uh, i will show you is to this is like you know when you're in your finder and you're doing right click create folder this is kind of what this is doing so you're typing mkdir so in here now i will use uh, i will create a folder called tutorial my okay so now if i so after mkdir tutorial my uh after i've run this command now, now i run uh, ls minus l again then somewhere in this huge list uh, i will probably towards the end oops uh, yep you can see that this tutorial that was just created is now in the list of all the files there and indeed if you don't believe me uh, you could also go to your finder and you would see the same uh, being somewhere in here so yeah so you can see the the folder being created like that so now uh, what we will do is so because tutorial my sounds a little bit silly let's also get into the mindset of like thinking about renaming stuff so in in the sh in the kind of like terminal world we are not really renaming things we are moving them so in so when i'm so for example now that i realize that this is a silly name tutorial my i want to rename it to my tutorial what i will do is i will use the move command mv to move tutorial my to my tutorial now so you can see now if i were to run ls minus l that now this is appears uh, that you see here the um the um uh, that the name has now been changed there's also a new last modified date here so this is uh, great and we have now co correctly both created and renamed the directory that we previously created um can i get like a little bit of feedback uh from maybe from um, from sue the, so far do you follow along i mean you're very experienced with like uh, with uh, some of these stuff but just asking random people now whether i'm um, whether they're yeah i'm one. following but I, I can't actually do most of it just because it's PC and I don't have all the software, so. Ah, yeah, you you are just <laughs> neither PC nor ODK possibilities. That's so terrible. Yeah. but uh, I'll just like you know poke and see what actually works on my machine. Okay, yeah. So there is a, obviously for you there is a diff. There would be a different tutorial um, that you would have to follow for CMD uh, commands. But most of the stuff that we are doing here, not the same commands, obviously, would also work in some one way or another in the cmd but yeah that's out of scope unfortunately here okay um then Nico, can uh, i ask you yeah. a quick question you, you know i'm the one with a million questions so ah, uh, so <laughs> i'm following along um in this list here uh on the the first column this like drwx blah 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 these seemingly random <laughs> letters what to me uh what are these okay, i'm assuming so, i i should kind of care about it but so it's this is beyond today's tutorial but just because you're asking i will tell you like some very basic things what these are okay so the first here means i think directory so this you should see this d wherever there is a directory and you should not see this d wherever there is a file and then uh, then you have like nine further characters and they are always rwx 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 i think and they always mean read write execute read write execute and these these kind of are bright like these are uh, permissions for this yeah. file for your file system that kind of is the the synopsis but uh, yeah it's this will take another course to go into detail but roughly that is would be the answer okay thank you Okay, great. Any other questions so far? Awesome. So now the next step is um, let's move. Now we have created a new directory. So now let's get inside of this directory. So we have this command uh, cd, which is stands for change directory. 
Um, and what we will do is we will now go uh, in the um, uh, in the in our new directory. But what what I want to get you into the habit of doing already today because it's like I see this all the time with many of you when I see you walking on the terminal. Always have your left hand on the tap 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 tap. So don't start typing my tutor. So always just M tap, and then immediately it will show up. If you already have a directory with a that is similarly called, you just keep writing letters until and tap write letter tap 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 tap. So always tap is auto complete for um, for the paths in your terminal. Okay, so I'm going inside now. Um, also because I'm annoyed by all of this like busy output that we see here and I just want to give us a fresh new look I'm just going to use the clear command the clear oh, command what the clear command what it does is it um, uh, it uh, Ellen did you want to ask something because I see you've unmuted yourself no sorry no worries. Um, so uh, the clear command what it does is it removes all the current output but it does not move you away from where you are so you're still in the my tutorial directory but all the other information that was previously printed anywhere is gone so i'm using it all the time just to clean up like cleaning cleaning up your room so in here now in the uh, in this what um, i will do is i will create another directory mk dear data this is already there uh, for some reason probably because i've done it before um, uh, when I um, ran this tutorial and uh, forgot to delete the files, so let me um, let me just get rid of. Um, sorry, guys, uh, I forgot to uh, to remove this. So in any case, um, let me just remove this now because I don't want any of the contents in there either. Please do not use this command rm in your first month of using the command line. You will just it will just lead to pain and uh, sorrow. So just forget you've seen it. Um, uh, so here now, uh, sorry, I'm just going to create the data directory again. And now I'm going inside of the data directory, the directory again. Let me just take a quick peek now. What my next tutorial step was. Da -da -da. Great. All right. So now let's start with some slightly more interesting pieces. So now what we will do next is we we are going to do move to uh, downloading and searching files. So um, if you go all to the uh, to the page here, you can yeah exactly. I hope Sean, you made this comment in response to my command. I did this command should never be used. Uh, at least not if you don't know what you do. Um, so uh, here you see this is a, so there's basically two big commands that are used for downloading files. There's two kinds of philosophies like there's, there's so there's the one is curl, the other one is uh, wget. Uh, curl is most more widely used, I think. Uh, many people prefer it because it has like a bit more configuration options. I usually use wget because it's like it's simpler to understand. So it's just easier for for like first time users to get used to uh, to that. Because for example, when you're downloading a file that is like has a lot of redirects, like you have with pearls, like you go somewhere, then the, there's a redirect somewhere else. There's a redirect somewhere else. Then wget by default uh, will deal with all of this kind of stuff. So what I will do now is. I'm going to run this command, wget um, gene to phenotype txt. Ah, uh, uh, you, you don't have a um, uh, wget installed. So let me just uh, find you one moment. Um, uh, okay. let's, let's find you the corresp uh, for corresponding uh, curl command. So I think it is minus s i need to make this up on the fly now because i hardly ever use curl and if one of you knows it very well then please just uh, uh just uh, chime in on this so this is 
think this is how this goes. No, something else. Uh, does anyone know how the curl redirect flag is, or can it can someone look it up so that the people that are using ZSH uh, so, or Z shell uh, can follow along? Or should I Google it now? Yeah, yeah, everyone has. That's why we use wget because. Uh, okay, I will go and look it up. One moment. All right, seems that this works. So, yeah. Try this here. Oops. Try this here and uh, see whether that works for you for the uh, for the Z shell users. And uh, give me some feedback also uh, if it worked great, sir. Right. Okay, uh, let's run um, ls minus l again to just take a look. And what you should see is something like this in your, um, so you should be in your data directory and you should see the genes to phenotype file in here. I'm gonna clear it and run it again so that we have a clear output. Awesome, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, um, so now I'm, Sorry, just give me 60 seconds. All right, sorry about that. Okay, uh, now, so of host gene to phenotype. Uh, so mm, what exact command did you send? The one that I uh, put up here. Uh, sorry, no, I, I just recopied it. It's uh, It works with what you put in the chat. Awesome, okay, good. Okay, so now let's do the, let's start a bit with the really cool stuff that we can do with the, um, um with a shell so uh so we have now um downloaded i okay just i because i always have to do this sorry guys but because i know this is slightly tangential um i just want to remind you all this is your duty as uh, ontology uh, uh, ontology creators ontology engineers semantic engineers software engineers any engineer when we are um, uh, referencing, downloading, and adding our the URLs to download our ontologies and ontology-related files to our scripts or doing it on the command line, we do not use URLs. We try to use pearls, persistent URLs. So I see still many, many pull requests that I see in all over Monarch and other groups. I see people adding things like raw.github URLs to some repository into your scripts. Do not do that when you're referencing files that do have persistent URLs. This here is not a normal URL. This is a uh, persistent um, uh, URL and uh, that was just tangential, not related to this tutorial, but uh, I just wanted to remind you to always keep this in mind, hammer it there. Awesome. All right. So now um, uh, let's uh, do a small uh, uh, test uh, of um, just don't read on and try to, uh, or, or maybe let me pick one of you to do this. Um, maybe let's pick Lee. Uh, Lee, do you want to uh, try and download H 
uh, the the oboe version of the human phenotype ontology and tell us how you did it and everyone else does it as well you can all do it but um, yeah lee you can um, tell us how you would do it hmm. <laughs> uh like going to the github repo and copying the uh the pearl and then doing the same command that you just had mm -hmm. yeah so let's let's uh, try let's uh Let's oh. do this exactly and share with us just in the chat the the pearl. Um, okay. So you don't want me to share a screen. Oh, do it, do it. I mean, I would love it. I will stop sharing and you you can share your screen. Thanks. Oops. Yeah, um uh, you hmm. no okay you don't want to you don't want to clone the entire repository just download hp.obo ah so i'd have to search through here or i could do it on my computer or i could do it through the github site i don't know because i already have the so HP. so do you know do you know what the persistent identifier of hpo is uh i would assume actually i don't <laughs> good so let's let's figure out like this is a very important exercise for everyone here so if you have if you already have hp.owl on your machine mm -hmm. let's make a slight tangent for the tutorial for something that will come in 10 minutes and do it with you now so go to your terminal okay. and please and please change to a directory that contains hp.owl uh, excellent so now let's stay here it's fine it's good okay. um so now what we will do is so basically you should all get into this mindset you don't know what the pearl is you can figure it out by all of our ontologies have a quite good system for for tagging the ontologies with their pearl so if it's if you immediately so obviously the one other way to do it is you can go to the obo foundry uh, uh, website and get the pearl from there but generally uh, if you just get into the habit of understanding this process of what you're going through right now it's also good for you so um, in order to figure out what the pearl is, what we will do is we will just take a quick peek at the top of the hp.owl uh, ontology. And, what we, and the way that we do this is we use a command called head. So type just head, like, the, like this head here, type this word, uh, word there, then space, and then hp.owl. Okay. That's it? So this head... Yeah, this head command is also super useful. It will um, it will give you access to a lot of kind of so it, it will allows you to just print the first lines of a file. By default, you see there are ten lines. This is not enough for us, so let's try head um, with uh, a minus thirty parameter. And then HBL as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so now you can see here the, oh, this is a large head. Um, oh, and, there, and you can see also a bug. I don't want to see this. Just um, uh, make a head minus 100. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. It's, it's a large, it's a very large header. Oops. Okay. So now you have to move up a bit in your terminal. Okay. There you go. So now stop. So you can see there, there is this owl ontology object there and next to it, you see the pearl of this ontology. So when it says owl ontology RDF about, this is where the pearl is. So copy this pearl. Um... Uh, sorry, I'm not seeing where you're looking here. Yes, exactly. That's it. Yeah. That's where all our ontologies have it's their pearl in this place. So you can copy this now. Now go back to the directory where we were before. Oh, okay. Um, never mind. Let's see. Uh, 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 and then I don't. Yep. 
Okay. Okay, now and now run the wget or curl command, whatever you were using before. Uh, Excellent. And just put the instead of the this uh, this URL, you just put whatever you posted there. But also try uh, before you send. Uh, just be careful with the O there. You don't want to use minus O. Uh, genes to phenotype, uh, you want to use um, minus O HP dot R. Yeah, so that's one thing you can't delete like that. We will. That's right. I always, I always try to do it, but yeah. uh, you, there are ways, uh, but we were not going to in this uh, kind of detail at this point uh, to use the mouse more effectively to hop in this uh, in here. Yeah. Okay. That, right. So it's not exactly the instructions because we wanted the hp.obo, but um, do you want to just quickly change the two dot owls to dot obo? Uh, yeah. Dot obo. Oh, not. Oh. Excellent. Yeah. And the same with the pearl. Excellent. Enter and done. Okay. Um, Thank you. That was good. Uh, did anyone else uh, have a question about this? Did you all manage to download hp.obo uh, as well, the way that uh, Lee showed it now? Two confirmations. Can you paste the link in there, Lee? Uh, yeah, let's see. Except for change it to obo. Excellent. So now let's do some searching. So we've done um, uh, we've done the head command here using. So in the tutorial, I was using the head command to inspect the genes to phenotype uh, annotation a bit. Uh, now we've done using. We oops. Oh, I'm not sharing screen. Sorry, guys. Uh, so we uh, before we were using the uh, so uh, in the tutorial. I mean, here you can see. Um, uh, I was demonstrating the head command for the genes to phenotype text file. If you want, you can do that as well and some explanations. And I'm also noticing- Can I stop you quickly? Yeah. Sorry, Nico. So head, if my, my like following, trying to follow along, it only works if you're in the correct uh, directory, right? Mm -hmm. yes. So if you're searching in a place where there's nothing, it's not going to give you it's not going to so, tell you this uh, this file, but in this other directory. Is that correct? No, no, no. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Okay. So basically, okay. you could you could though. So let's say here. Let me just take a quick look what I have in here. So yeah, um, you see that I'm right now in the my tutorial directory. So I could still go and say head and then data, and then uh, whatever I have in there, genes to phenotype. So it will. Oh, Yes, I don't know what uh, something went wrong with this Perl command. I'm not sure whether this curl command actually worked as advertised. Um, so I'm going to run it. So I did someone. Are we sure that this uh, curl command actually did what we, what it's supposed to do? So I'm going to take a clue. A bit too slow on my computer, maybe. Oh, maybe. So let's see. Head data. Oops. Head. Hmm. Anyway, so I, this curl IL still doesn't work. One of the other reasons I prefer to use uh, wget. So you all that have don't have wget installed, can someone please, of the more experienced people, just figure out how to do a curl uh, with a redirect? I mean. This should be super trivial. I just don't do it in practice. So maybe Joe, can you find out how to do a curl with a redirect? Uh, yeah. Anyways, so for the curl people, Joe will find out how to do a curl proper download. I will uh, continue now with the tutorial a little, little bit. Yeah, thanks. I don't know why this. Uh, Maybe this is maybe the minus O is wrong. I don't know. Maybe it should be some other parameter to save the file. 
Okay, so now let's uh, move on. So the next thing is really like one of the key principles, the key commands, like the the most used command basically in one of in many of our general pipeline, and this is the grep command. So if you, um, uh, I need, sorry, I need to download the file properly so that I can demonstrate what's up here. Um, all right so the grab command uh stands i think for global regular expression print or something like that i put it in the tutorial and the grab command is a command that allows you to essentially it takes a look inside of the file of a file or a set of files and then uh, it will try to match an input string inside of that file and then as a result print it tell you for example which file are you so ellen are you sure that though this this file is actually a table rather than a, uh not like this weird thing that i just saw like there seems to be some not it doesn't seem to be a proper table it seems to be some strange um GitHub error message. Yeah, that's not a table. Exactly. Yeah, that's not what uh, this the what I was hoping. Anyways, though, let's not worry about this right now. Uh, let's move on and uh, Joe will figure it out and uh, let you all know. Um, so now uh, let's use this command. So what I want to do is I want to look inside of the gene to phenotype.txt i want to look for example for something like uh let's just look for something uh, simple omen <laughs> so it would be huge the output but it doesn't really matter so let me just look for omen one two three and see maybe, maybe something comes up um and um so what's happening here is you can see this is the input string so the the grab is the command again this is the input string, which is just um, the, no, the, yeah, it's not supposed to look like that. Um, uh, and uh, so this is the input that we are searching for. And then uh, this is the file name in which we want to search. And what you can see here in the output is it prints us just every single line in the file that had omim one to three somewhere in it. Uh, so you can see here, there is omen one to three in this line. There is omen one to three in this line. There is omen one to three in this line. So you could change this. Uh, for example, let's just use this prognathia here and search for something else. Uh, so you see every single line in this file that has prognathia um, uh, in it. So by default, this grab command, so you will, in the more advanced tutorial, we will uh, learn some like very interesting um, ways in which you can use the, um, um, in which you can use the grab command. But uh, for this initial tutorial, really think of it as a search. And the one thing that you should um, um, remember about grab is, is that it is actually case sensitive. So if you want, if you wanted to, um, change if you wanted to you look for all instances let's see let's look for this one here for example i don't know uh, if you wanted to look for all instances that are capital prognathia you can see there is no match uh, because there is no instance in anywhere in this data set which has prognathia in uh, capital letters so in order to get this to work you need to use the grab minus i which means case insensitive and you will see it will be able to match the um, uh, the uh, lowercase prognathia ones as well. Okay, so mm -hmm. now, yeah, go ahead. Is there, a, because looking at the tutorial and looking at what is in here, um, is there any difference? Like when do you put quote or when do you not put quote? Um, mm -hmm. Very great question. When you, when you search yeah. or so when you grab? Yeah, that's a very, very good question. And this is a very important thing, like for no matter how experienced you are in uh, in the generally in like with 
you have like a white space. This white space is actually meaningful. So if you have something, you see that there's like a, this space here and this space there. This means that if, that we are talking about a new kind of, I forgot the formal word for this. Let's say like a new token or part of the, of the command. And if you do not, let's say I'm using, I'm trying to search for this here. So you see, just so that you see what would happen if I would do that without the quotes. So if you see, this is just like you um, having two different words side by side. It actually works for some reason. Maybe it, maybe this is a very exceptional case where grab actually allows multiple words to be put together. But usually this would be a, would be considered by a command as a new argument. And that's why we want, by putting quotes around them, we basically tell it that, um, uh, that we, this is a single string, um, a single argument, and a single string we are looking for in our file. So that's why we are, I would basically recommend just always put quotes around them. You don't have to, but if you use a single word, when it, and it seems also that grab in particular somehow allows me to put multiple words without a, a quote, but for most commands, it is very meaningful. Yeah, so very good question. Thank you. Okay. Um, now let's uh, do something a bit more. Uh, let me just quickly download um, hp.obo as well. Sorry, what was the grep minus i? Okay. The minus i part. So now let's do. Uh, yeah, that that mean. So the minus i means search in a case insensitive way. So whatever you put under behind it, it will, so if you look for um, mandibular, if you do the, if you do uh, grab minus I uh, like that, then the search will not uh, care whether the M is lowercase, like with a small M or uppercase with a large M when it's doing the search. Now that's why you generally is a good idea to use the minus i because otherwise you may miss interesting uh, matches when you're doing your search. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay, great. All right. So now um, one of the other cool thing with grab is that you don't you can only just use so, and that's where basically what I'm using it for a lot of the time. You come you don't only you can't only just you uh, use it for looking inside of, um, of searching inside of a single file, but you can also go and search inside of an entire uh, directory. And the way this is how this works. So. I will just use look for the string prognathia. Um, in uh, uh, and what what happens here now? So you see, I wrote this minus r parameter. This is not necessary in this particular case, but just put it always. Usually, it is what we want to do, which stands for recursive, and it will search the directory that you are in right now and all of its subdirectories. Now we don't have any subdirectories, but still, it's usually it's just. Basically, when you want to search an entire directory for something, that is how you do it. Uh, so you can do uh, like that. And then you use the period. And this period is actually one of the special characters that you should all remember. So period, wherever you encounter it, means this current directory. So uh, you see here, my tutorial data, this is where we are. The period is a reference to the current directory. Uh, so if you search for this, so the cool thing is you can see here, um, I have a, I matched a bunch of rows in my genes to phenotype table up here. And I also matched a bunch of rows inside of hp.obo as well. Uh, so this is uh, super cool. I could use this for actually searching across files. And uh, if I don't like the output and if I'm really just looking for a file that contains prognosia, then I can even add another parameter here which is uh, grab minus L. And this minus L means don't bother printing the lines, just give me the file names. And you can see here, cool, uh, I got the um, file name genestephenotype.txt and hbo.obo, so I know that the string Pugnetia is at this file. Now, why is this so relevant? So this, for example, in many ontologies that are using like, for example, tables to manage their, um, 
their uh, files uh, when you're looking in uh, in you don't you just want to know where is this term defined where is it mentioned where are um wh which script is doing something with this term um and so on you just want to know or which in which import is this terrible string and uh, to to remove it or something like that uh, this is really powerful to just know that you can search through your entire, for example, ODK directory or something uh, with this command for a particular ID or for a name and figure out which files are they in so that you know, okay, I can go into this file. And uh, if you're a bit more advanced with grep, then here this looks like a super simple string, but you can do actually much more powerful search expressions here, regular expressions that drive your search um, uh, for something that go way beyond anything that you could do with a finder. All right, um, before we do the la very last thing I wanted to do, um, we just have enough time to do this, but I just wanted to ask uh, any questions uh, to, up to this point? I have yet another question. <laughs> mm -hmm, good. Um, so the period at the end of this comment, you said it's to, to say search in this directory. The first time I ran, I ran it, I didn't have it and it still worked. So, mm -hmm. is, I mean, is it important? Is it not important? Maybe it's redundant. I don't know. Maybe it's like these kinds of commands are sometimes okay. smart and they may just by default when there's no parameter supplied uh, uh, search in the current directory, it's possible. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank good, you. good. Thank you. I didn't know, even know that. I never, I never really checked whether it works without. Awesome. All right. Any other questions uh, up until this point? Great. So now let's do the last and the really like this is where things get really, really uh, interesting. Um, this is the first sort of flavor of more advanced processing, um, um, which is called piping. So. You, the one thing that you can do on the Unix command line is, um, so just to remind you, just remind the sentence, mo most of the commands that we kind of work with, not all of them, but many of them, you send a command and something gets printed on the terminal. Uh, that's the kind of stuff that we've been doing uh, so far. So you send a command and then it prints something back on the terminal. Now, one thing that you can do with, um, uh, with uh, uh, these Unix commands is just to pipe them one into the other. Uh, so the idea is this, let's say, let's do some very, very easy thing. So let's look at the grab command we've done uh, before, but instead of, so I'm just going back to this phenotype thing here. Um, so remember, this is the output here. So I wanna do a search but I don't really care about all of the results. I want to, I only want to see the last five. Okay. So the way that you do this is you add this pipe symbol, which basically tells the command, the shell that collect the output from the previous command, from the grab command. So all of this stuff that was printed up here, and then instead of printing it, pass it on to the next thing. So let's now, uh, look at the last 10 lines of uh, this output. Yeah. So the way that this works, I'm just going to clear it so that it becomes even more clear. Ah, so you can see, instead of printing 100 different things, uh, all of the results, I pass the results of the grab, which are 100 results, to another command, which is the tail command, and then let the tail command do the rest. And the tail command just prints the last 10 lines of, uh, of my search. Now, so this is kind of like the essence of piping and you can do insanely cool things uh, with uh, piping and we don't have a lot of time to go um, into the details, but just want to show you, uh, I actually, I want to ask some people or does someone want to ask something? I have a question, Nico. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. When you do these searches with grep, will it always return the results in the same order? So if you ran the command you just ran now, will it return the same last 10 results or how does it serialize the, the output? Excellent, excellent question. So. Um, this is something that I should probably factor in in this tutorial, and I wrestled a bit whether I should do it, but 
the cool thing like with um, with kind of these whole unix type philosophy of processing files is is it's all or meant much of it let's say is based on the idea of files like text files and the text files that it operates on are lines so what happens is, is here in the beginning in the beginning of this grab command you open like you can explicitly open the file with a different command, but you can see that the grab command actually opens the file. And then what it does is it goes line by line through this file. And if it finds a match, it prints it immediately. Boom, 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 like a stream. Okay, so it will be always in the correct, in the same order because it goes through the entire file line by line. And therefore it will have the order of the file uh, in which stuff is printed. However, you can, of course, decide that this is not what you want. You actually want to change the order after the fact. So, for example, one thing you could do is you could go and decide that you want to sort the output first by uh, alphanumerically. So this will you, you will do the search, find all the lines, sort them using a normal sort like you would do in a, um, when you're doing sorting in Excel or something on the first column. Um, and then you pass it to the tail command afterwards. Uh, so what you see is here, uh, it's a different output than before. Yeah. So you have now these kind of like, you can see a bit before you had these weird numbers here, that these are some kind of identifiers, 7703, 7737. These are literally the fine, the later file uh, rows in the file. But now actually what you see is the files with the largest numeric values uh, sorry the alpha uh, the largest string um, this is a string sort here okay so uh that is um, how this is done like every order is preserved by because it's reading a file and it's going through the file line by line that's why the order is always deterministic thank you so just to confirm it's sorting based on what column here or what value? Uh, the, 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 sort, uh, the sort command, yeah, the sort command is a bit dumb like that. The sort command, so everything after the colon here is actually a row in the table. Uh, so this 92949 is actually some value in this gene to phenotype file. And what this sort command does, it's super stupid it, uh, in the default setting like that. It will pretend the whole row is a string, and then it will sort the string using uh, alpha alphabetical sort. Mm -hmm. Can you sort on a different column if you want? Uh, pro probably you can. I don't know how, but what I could uh, I can show you quickly is uh, you could what you you can do this kind of stuff here. So you can do a cut. Uh, so let me see. Okay. So what I did here is I used another uh, command uh, which is called cut, and this cut command is a um, command that extracts and is, is like a kind of table cutting command and it extracts the second column in my table uh, in, uh, which is here this list of genes i think and then uh, passes it on to the next uh, sort and then i sort the the gene names and then show the last uh, gene names in the list but whether you can sort now, there is probably some, some smart way that I don't know, but whether you can now sort the input here based on the second column, probably, but not beyond my, uh, my skill sets. Great. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, AWK. Uh, probably you can. Yeah, that's Ugur says AWK, another really complex command, but very, very uh, important. Great. Um, any last question? Otherwise, I'll just make an announcement for the next time. Excellent. All right. So we almost got through most of the stuff. If you feel like you would benefit from like doing this yourself, the whole tutorial is uh, written exactly as it is in the, um, as we just did it, but with a few more explanations and details around the edges. Uh, it would be nice if someone could make a pull request to add the curl command so that we don't have this issue for newcomers with the curl and the w get. Uh, problem. That would be amazing. Thank you. And um, next time um i will ask first whether you're interested to go into more depth into the command line i think it is useful for all of you to know it a little bit and then we will do some slightly more advanced stuff uh, yeah we can also do the instructions for installing wcat 
That's a good idea. Um, um, and then we will do some slightly more advanced things like that allows, uh, which are about customizing your command line a little bit with your own information and your own functions. And um, this is a more, this is more geared towards more power users, uh, if you're interested. So uh, there's also some resources, some additional resources that you can, um, and you can also Uber make a pull request to add that if you want to the tutorial. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you.